Over the years, I've created thousands of hours of richly informative shows. Oh, I think this is glorious. We've amassed quite a library. I wondered, what could we do with all of these tapes? I soon realized that the very best solution was to give these tapes to my daughter Alexis. Is mom wearing mom jeans? And her friend Jennifer. Martha! That's like the worst thing ever! To see what they can come up with. Do you think your mom's gonna be mad at us? I hope so. <laughs> you big into having your own clothes? There's a dry cleaner down the street. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's just not something I do myself. Sometimes I'll cut the bottom of something and leave a jagged hem. Yeah, that's hot, all that frayed <laughs> stuff fine. that you walk down the street in. But aren't you worried about sometimes with hemming jeans that it'll change the bottom of the jean? I never have to hem my jeans. Because she's tall. <sighs> Let's see Martha hem some pants. Well, Joel's a lucky man. Oh, my God, how tall is he? Production assistant here at our studio, and he needed a new pair of pants to go to a party uh, this weekend. And oh, this is what he's wearing to a party. Short in a pair of oh. pants. So this is his party attire. Oh. Pants. Do you feel uncomfortable? No, I'm he's quite tall. With any pins. Is he on a box? And I don't know, but there's a little bulge in his pants, and that's making me uneasy. So how long do you like? He that? is on a box. Class he's seven. so high. I mastered that, nice. and then I found out the wonders of sending out. You know what? Doing it yourself is sometimes a lot of fun, and you have lots of time at night. You don't go out every night, do you? No, I don't go out at all. Right. You don't go out with any other girls, yeah, right? Yeah, you lie in bed and think about me, Only don't me, you? Only me, Joel. Don't you, Joel? Rawr. Your young gentleman friend put on his pants in a, a, another room, of course. So did you just hear she got embarrassed? In another room, of course. And you have to sort of turn up and you know this is do probably Martha is in all her glory it's much shorter than the other on her knees in front of a man a handsome young boy <laughs> I need to look neat you always look good anyway oh thank you see well, not only is working on sets here on the production of sets but I think I vaguely remember meeting him he comes in the morning and making sure I get to the studio he picks me up he picks her up? Today, but today I made you a cappuccino, didn't I? That was wonderful. Martha's flirting again. Oh, my God. She is, she is. She's trying to get in his pants. <laughs> okay, so then. Oh, my oh, gosh. Yes. So this other uh, Joel yeah. can stand on one foot. He's very talented. He's multidextrous. <laughs> I think that looks good. So the process now is to go take them off, put on your other pants, and okay. come back with these pants. <laughs> Look, I'll she's so awkward. Joel. Well, that's natural. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh. Joel's in boxer shorts. Martha, someone took the pants. They did. Do you think they sewed the fly of those uh, shorts up? Just they must case? have sewed the fly. He's wearing underwear under his underwear. You think so? Definitely, he's double underweared, yeah, and he's a cup oh, under that. This is this TV <laughs> gang. They're just, they think they're being risky. Or jockstraps. I've seen plenty of men in their underwear. She's seen plenty of men in underwear? Plenty. Too many. At least you have shorts on and not those horrible... So clothes. at the beginning of the show, she said, change in private. Now and she now... says, come on out, try not to get a woody. Yeah. Which is theme is, and this is a great iron. If you haven't, have you gotten yourself an I've, iron yet? I have Wait, I think he well. was here. Does he? This is Ball Joel. Oh, my gosh, how long ago was this? Poor thing's still here. He was here two days ago. You saw him. He's what? so cute and bald. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's naked with Martha. Poor thing. Maybe that's why he went bald. Yeah. Ah! Oh, Joel! Where'd your hair go? You oh, lost it every thing, all your Joel. hair. Why is he so close to me? Very handsome. Why not? Tell us about the shoot. The, I want how yeah. fake. Okay. Head to toe. Yeah. All bought for me. Really? The only thing I was wearing that was my own were the boxer briefs underneath the grandpa boxers. I told you, Alexis. Right through here, underneath. So, did you feel like Martha was flirting with you? Because okay. we feel like Martha is Absolutely. flirting with you. Absolutely. You did? Is it what? uncomfortable? Or does she always flirt with you? She's always cordial. To no. <laughs> <laughs> be me, look at your pants and say, who's hemmed these? Did you have a girlfriend at the time? No. You never know. Do you like girls? Littler. Yes. Okay. Yeah, very much. Okay. <laughs> Don't go backwards, go forwards towards you. Okay. Now, pick up another couple threads. Did everyone on the set make fun of you for weeks on end after this? Oh, I got made fun of all the time before. You and Martha. Because you picked Martha, Martha. up every morning? Yeah. No, and I actually did. It wasn't code for walk of shame. It was... But everyone implied that you were having sex with Martha. The pants, the better. Okay. <laughs> Here's the pivotal question. Does Martha know your name? Yes. 
And that's a double-edged sword. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Joel! It's, it's nice because you get a good morning and how are you doing, Joel? And, but then as soon as something's wrong. Where the hell is Joel? Yeah. I liked very much when Joel she called you out when you were in the back changing. Yeah. She went, Joel! Joel! Oh, Joel! Oh, Joel. Oh, Joel. Come to Mama Joel! See the excitement in her eyes? Yeah. I think I hear Martha calling you right too. this very minute. I think you need to you're, go. You're, you're probably right. Yeah, All right, ladies. Go. Bye, Joel. See you later. Nice to see ya. Close He's much older now. How long ago was this? I don't know. What? The hair is <laughs> he really has like fluffy. A pompadour, right. mutton chops. What are these called? Sideburns. Sideburns. I mean, he's a different person. He's a different guy. Yeah. yeah. That's a hemming stitch. Okay, so then I'm going to show you how to finish so that when you're here at. He's like, I know how to finish, Martha, just fine. <laughs> Still hemming your leg. I do it every night. <laughs> All by myself. Wear <laughs> these to work one of these days when you pick me up, okay? I will. Okay. <laughs> that is the way not to go to the tailor next time you need a pair of pants with a hem. Thank you. Bye. Ooh, baby. Don't go to the tailor. Just come to Mama Martha in your skivvies. Now he's left to sew Look, on now he has own. to pretend he cares. When I was in grade school, I had to wear a uniform, which consisted partially of a pleated plaid skirt <laughs> and I used to have to ha try to hem them myself and iron them myself which there are pictures of me standing there waiting for the bus with my skirt like this the ends of it go <laughs> because it's a d I hemmed it with like your know, safety pins yeah. and I ironed it so the front was long and side no, they're just the whole the edge of it, every edge just goes whoop yeah and all Shocking. uneven yeah of course and my mother denied it, and I pulled out the picture. And she didn't notice the days you went to school like that? She didn't care. <laughs> and nothing gives me more pleasure than sitting down. Nice hat, Martha. After a morning in the garden and having Is lunch. she Farmer Brown? Like, what's going on? Who are those friends? Do you know? People I hate, I'm sure. So when I was six, my parents moved from a beautiful apartment on Riverside Drive overlooking the Hudson River and yeah. dragged me to Connecticut where I could play by myself in the dirt with no friends. That sounds like a hell of a good time. It was fantastic. Yeah. And we moved into this charming farmhouse with a bathtub with no shower. Oh. Using the Tupperware to dunk water to, to wash your hair with. And the cat would always poop in that particular bathtub what? as well. Why? I don't get it. Why? So and there were no doorknobs. You stuck your finger in the hole and, would <laughs> and shut the door. And if you wanted the door to stay shut, you'd fold up a piece of paper and stick it in the door. And then that was how you kept your door closed. Um, well, I, I, I don't know what to You've rendered me speechless. So let's see let's the take house. Take a look at the house. Yeah. Jennifer, it's my childhood. Oh, this must make you feel so good to watch, right? Exactly. For me, creating a home is a joyous process that can provide a lifetime of satisfaction. Today, it looks I want to big. share with you the 30-year story of my Turkey Hill property. Oh, boy. The place that I call home. It was a Sunday in Look! 1971. Look! I have that picture. First discovered That's where we moved. Well, that looks cute, though, like that. Built in yeah, it's charming. This old, run-down farmhouse needed a lot of work, which we began right away by learning how to do everything ourselves. And she wonders why my father left. <laughs> Let's do it all ourselves. It's so much fun. When I wanted a brick terrace, I learned how to lay brick myself. When we added a pergola... I, I can't believe your mother laid her own brick. Over it. First she laid Joel, and then she laid the brick. <laughs> it's one of the most peaceful spots from which to view the rest of the property and is put to good use all year round. Here's what should have happened. You know the cute picture of the old house and the Mercedes? Yes. Bulldozer. <laughs> Start from scratch. Really? Everything would have been better. And nothing gives me more pleasure than sitting down. Nice hat, Martha. Is she Farmer Brown? Like, what's going on? Who are those friends, do you know? People I hate, I'm sure. When we wanted a pool, we built it. It looks so pretty, Alexis. Of course it looks pretty. Do you think that comes with no torture? You think, like, the pool cleans itself, the chickens feed themselves, the bricks lay themselves? No. Just look at all these wonderful apples. I can't That's the biggest, most perfect apple. It is, yeah. That came right out of... Stu Leonard's? Yeah. <laughs> a wide variety of apples, peaches, pears, and cherries. 
It's beautiful. No, shut up. It is. The pictures are magnificent. At the right time of day, everything looks good. <laughs> How about the heat of summer when you're told to go weed for 10 hours? This is a wisteria tree, and it's not the first tree that's been in this place. Let me tell you a little story. The first tree that tell was growing me. here was grown by my father, a beautiful tree wisteria. Oh, her parents lived there before her? I don't know what she's talking about. Me, well, you have to hit the tree with a hammer, break the bark so that buds form. Well, one night we came out here with a hammer, banged the tree. One night? In spring, it bloomed beautifully. And I thought, ah, oh, finally we have the solution. Well, after bloom, it promptly died. And the <laughs> is the <laughs> They killed the tree? They killed it with the hammer. Don't hammer the crap out of your trees. We just learned a lesson. Oh, well, that's good. And especially at night. Each square of lettuce was just enough for 100 salads. And I would sometimes replant the squares as many as five times in one growing season. In these 30 years- Look how cute she was. She's beautiful. And I mean, she is gorgeous. She used to be a source of pride at harvest time. Look at that carrot. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, baby. baby. Bounty of the garden with all my friends. I would be lost without fresh herbs for cooking. It took me three months to install the herb garden with the help of friends. Do you say herb? I say herbal, unfortunately. I do not say herb. So you have herbs in your salad. Herbs I have herbs in, in my salad. Do you drink herbal tea? Because it's herbal tea. I'm a big fan of the cattle prod, so if you want to get one and just every time I say herbal, yeah. just zap me. The biggest lesson my home and gardens have taught me is that the learning never ends. I know I'll spend my lifetime growing in the garden. I'm sorry that your memories are not... Fond? Yeah, but it's a lovely looking place. Jennifer, you like to look at it through the plate glass, yes. sliding door, air conditioned, yes. bug free, free yes. environment. Yes. There was no sliding glass door. Right. We're lucky if there was a screen. There was no, you didn't stay inside, you went outside. <laughs> at all times. At all times, and you weeded. <laughs> and you laid brick. And you cleaned out the chicken coop. Do it. Okay, I get it. Torture. Help. <laughs> put your honey thing in. I did, now I'm using it. No, you're not supposed to put it in. It's supposed to go on the side, you douche. Were you gonna say you douche? I don't know what I was doing. You were gonna say you douche? I might have. I do love a cup of tea. Do you like lemon? I do like lemon. And I even like milk in my tea, but I don't tend to have it that way because I know it takes away from the antioxidants. It also cools mm -hmm. it down a little bit, which irritates me. Right, because you like everything scalding hot. Scalding yeah, like hot. crazy hot. But we're going to see how to make lemon honey pots. What's a lemon honey pot? I have no clue. I like the honey bear. Me too, it's so cute. This it, one has his arms up. He does, he's like, ah! Right. Don't squeeze, Don't me, squeeze too hard. me. Yeah. It's a little wasteful. Like, I wish the honey bear was this big, but in fact, that would be so cute. It would be hard to squeeze that one. That's too big. Really? Then you have to grab a giant honey bear and be like, squeeze it. No, in. but it'd be worth it. Yeah. Let's see. How would you like to make a lemon honey pot? Remove the top and inside fresh honey. Oh, that's delicious looking. For a cup huh. of tea. I love that idea. I don't like it. It's make. dirty. It's so cute. Take a good lemon. Take a good lemon. I played Winnie the Pooh in a camp play when I was eight years did. old. Not always beautiful. But I could sing the honey this time song. You're perfect. Cut off the top. Oh, about a third of the way down. So she's Cut taking off the pointy end, you Jennifer. Oh, yeah. not the nubbin end. Not the not ball, right? yeah. And I would suggest just cutting off just a little bit of the bottom. Oh, then she says take off just a little bit of the bottom. Which is the bottom, how do you know? This is the bottom, she's saying that this is the bottom. Yep. And now, with a sharp knife, cut through the sections of the lemon without going through the rind. You don't want to go through I'm the I'm afraid rind. of getting lemon in, in my eye. I'm afraid of cutting my hand. And you can use a melon scoop like this. Oh, it's like a baby grapefruit, look. It's sectioned like a baby grapefruit. Lemon oh, you're doing it over a bowl? For lemonade. And then gradually scrape out the flesh of the lemon. Ah, I just got lemon all over my face. It's very cleansing. You're ready. I Honey. think that you should wear an apron or not your fanciest dress when doing this. Mm -hmm. Dry this. And guess where the honey comes from? Well, I this is the cutest thing. I think it's gross. No, it's adorable. You know that when you get your sorbet and the lemon at the restaurant? Uh-oh. Oh, yeah.
It's really bad? That lemon has been no. eaten out of by so many people. Really? Yeah, you think they do this for everybody? Yeah. Uh -uh. Oh, no. that's upsetting. So you just fill up your lemon honey pot. I'm having trouble getting on. everything out. You don't have to get everything out. I think you do no, to be you don't. clean. What difference does it make? Fine. It's lemon infused honey. It's beautiful. Is that what she said? Nope. That's oh. what I decided. Nice. You just swirl it in the honey and then let it drop. You go like this. Right into your cup. Uh oh. It's a lot what did of you do wrong? Watch that you went hole. through the bottom? Oh, Not me. I'm perfect. Your Put your honey thing in. I did, now I'm using it. No, tea. you're not supposed to put it in. It's supposed to go on the side, you douche. Are you going to say you douche? I don't know what I was going to say. You're going to say you douche? I might have. So next time you have guests coming over for tea, make a pretty little lemon honey pot. It's a good thing. This is not what you wanted to end up with. But mine is. Thank you. Delicious. Tell everybody about the meeting we went to, the very important meeting in Los Angeles. I took my shoes off. And we got in a little trouble, didn't we? Not because of no, 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 no. no. Maybe. Now, Jennifer, why are your shoes always off? Oh, because I'm sitting watching TV and I like to be comfortable and cozy. I have shoes, they're here and they're cool. I have beautiful platforms. Can I see them? Yeah. They're lovely. Now, are those easy to walk in? Are they comfortable? Yeah, these are really comfortable. Do you ever wear shoes that are not comfortable? The answer is if I have to go somewhere okay. for a couple of hours, then I can suffer and wear still a platform, right. but maybe less of a one. Less of a Like a, heel? maybe a heeled platform. Like that, only chunkier, much chunkier. So will you wear oh, a no, shoe that's like stiletto. this? No, 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 that's stiletto. Oh, look at the lint. Can you get that lint off my shoe? Yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not into stiletto because I feel like I look like a weeble. They wobble, but I would fall These down. These shoes are actually quite comfortable. No, they're not. But they take no. getting used to. Are you willing to suffer like that? No, like, I'm not. Get used to the, no. To how, no. No. I remember going shoe shopping with my mother. It was, we were shopping for her, and there's a woman whose feet, she's beautiful and thin, and she's trying on shoes too, and I'm looking at her, her feet are covered in blisters. And I'm like, ew, right. A, gross, B, three, why is she doing this to herself? Exactly. I don't know. Right, because you are a slave to fashion. I you are fashion. I will wear the uncomfortable shoe, and I will curse the person who made the shoe. But if it's a good shoe, I'll keep wearing right. it. Right, and see, I won't. If I feel uncomfortable, then it pollutes the rest of my day. It just but we, makes... Tell, us, tell everybody about the meeting we went to, the very important meeting in, in Los Angeles one day. I took my shoes off during the meeting. I did. I, and we got in trouble, didn't we? Not because of... No, 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 no. no. Maybe. What happened was, we both got very comfortable. I took off my shoes, and you started swearing like a sailor. <laughs> and the combination of the two things, I think, sort of did us in. I think you need to just be true to yourself with your fashion sense. Because, quite frankly, the midriff-bearing shirts, never going to work on me. How about the new high-waisted pants? And the new high-waisted pants? Lose it. The older I become. The shorter life is. The shorter you get? <laughs> <laughs> the, the older I get, the more I realize that life is short. And I want to be comfortable in my life. And I don't feel good if I'm, too dre if I'm dressed up. Because every day at work, well, what do you wear to work? I like to be comfortable. I like to be cozy. I like to be in my bed. And since I can't be in my bed at all times, I create that cozy feeling by wearing sweats to work. As often or as I can. pajamas or PJs because there is the theory that if you want to move up in the world dress for you the dress job you for want. the job you want not yeah. the job you have well I often ask you are you trying to be a hooker <laughs> <laughs> be sure to catch whatever with Alexis and Jennifer every day on Martha Stewart living Sirius satellite radios channel 112 for more information check out whateverradio.com